we're going to be joined by Deborah Hosseini in just a minute. We're having some Skype issues, but we're sorting that out with her. She is from the Art of Autism. And one of the, I, I love this organization because as somebody who, uh, my basic training in life has been in the arts, uh, albeit in, in theater, but I fully understand the benefits of the arts in anyone's life. It can be something that can be recreational and just something to relieve stress. And we've been talking about relieving stress all day today, but it is something, it is another way of expressing ourselves. And I have seen in the classroom how important it can be for people, uh, regardless of what their situation is, give them an outlet, give them another outlet. And sometimes what happens transcends uh, and becomes art. It is just absolutely amazing. And we brought this organization up because a couple of weeks ago, 50 Cent made some comments that were inappropriate. And I said, after he apologized, and some people were saying, you know, the apology was not all that sincere. I said, you know, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and donate? And I give you some suggestions of some of my favorite autism charities. And one of the places that I mentioned was the art of autism. And so it's come up and I, some of you have written and said, I don't know about this organization. So I asked Deborah to join us today to talk a little bit about what they do. Deborah, are you with us? Yes, I am. There you are. You look great. So for people who have never heard of the art of autism, except for me saying that 50 Cent should write you a check for at least a million dollars, <laughs> and we hope that he does. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me, uh, let's start by saying, you know, when did you start this? What is it? And what do you do? Um, we started the organization about um, eight years ago, and it really started locally. My son is an artist, and um, I was, in, and then I was working for a nonprofit at that time, the Rhythmic Arts Project, and we had an annual benefit. We include other artists, and from there, the project just continued to grow. And I was offered um, a book um, to write a book about three or four years ago with Autism Today, and that was my first book. And then I wrote another book um, just in the last year, um, which features 54 artists, or this last one features actually 77 artists and poets on the autism spectrum. And so we have exhibits all over the United States and Canada, and it's just uh, a really great organization. It's about community and supporting the artists. Which is a wonderful thing. And let's take a minute to talk about the books because the books are beautiful. And uh, we had an opportunity to run into you at the LA Walk Now for Autism and did a little brief interview with you then. And uh, we, there we've got the, the front cover of the book that we're showing the viewers at home. It's a beautiful coffee table book worthy of being on any coffee table in any home or any business. It is a conversation starter. It's absolutely luscious, some of the artwork, and there are even uh, written poems and things within the book. How can somebody get one of these books, Deborah? Um, how can they buy the book? Is that what you just said? How, how can they buy it? Oh, they can buy the book. At, um, it's our website, www.autism.com. And um, and it's also on Amazon. Uh, if you buy it from our website, of course, I get more of the proceeds than if you buy it on Amazon, which I don't get very much from that. Okay. Okay. So they can go to your website and uh, I want to, because you were skipping a little bit there with the Skype, but it's www.theartofautism with hyphens between each of the words, correct? Well, th yes. I have two domains that point to the same thing. The okay, great. One is just autism.com. Okay. No Artofautism.com. Okay, great. I'm on right now the one that's The Art of Autism with hyphens, and it's a beautiful site. Uh, and you've got so much going on in your organization right now. You guys have grown and developed, and you've got several very accomplished artists who have some really exciting things going on. Tell us a couple of things about some of the artists and what they've got going on. Well, had um, one artist, Frank Lewis Allison, who was on Disable Town Square, and that's on the cover of our website. And Danny Bowman, I let people in Southern California know her. She's um, a 17-year-old little, um, she's like a great artist and animator. And 
and a speaker as well. She was at Comic Con for a couple um, shorts, and that's almost unheard of to um, show two shorts at Comic Con. And she, awesome. um, with that, my own son is going to be going to the Smithsonian for four uh, months with he won a BSA Volkswagen um, art competition, and so he's. Uh, that's through the Kennedy organization. I don't have that up yet. Um, and we have just like so many artists um, doing wonderful things in the public right now. And it's, it's really a great time to be working with, with this organization. And we're, we're, we're skipping a little bit in terms of the Skype, so I want to fill in some of what I know you were saying. Uh, one of the people that she was talking about was Danny Bowman, who is a 17-year-old, who is a wonderful artist, illustrator. Uh, Danny's got some children's books that she's illustrated, and uh, you were saying she's all, she was also featured at Comic-Con with a couple of shorts, this re most recent Comic-Con. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Uh, that Frank Lewis Allen's work was featured in Times Square, and I know you had an opportunity to go and do that uh, and see that. You also, some of the work that is, there it is right there. Isn't that amazing? Uh, some of there, and you can see that it says Frank Allen on that painting. That's a gorgeous painting. How exciting that must have been for all of you and for him and for his family to be featured in Times Square. Did you guys just have an amazing time there? Well, we weren't there. He's, he's from England. He wasn't there either. Oh. But he entered, uh, it was an internet contest, and he actually was one of the winners, and um, they displayed art that day, and he, he um, his art was up on Times Square on one of those big, big screens. That's amazing. Very exciting. Well, I know you guys went back east. Was If it wasn't to New York, did you go to the Smithsonian? Where I know that you and Carrie went recently. Where did you go? Well, Carrie was just in Windsor, Ontario, for, uh -huh. um, she was doing some training and um, had an art exhibit there. Last year, we were in the Berkshires in New York City. We had exhibits. We are going back to the Berkshires uh, with a college internship program, and it's a good purpose gallery. It's um, Michael McMahon, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, he has a wonderful gallery in um, Lee, Massachusetts. So we'll be back in March or April next year. Um, with with that exhibit. Wonderful. And tell us also, because some of the paintings featured in your book were also uh, chosen by the United Nation, Nations to commemorate Autism Awareness Month. How, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, there were um, there were eight selections for United Nations Autism Awareness Stamps, uh -huh. and four of them came from a notice we put it out to our artist and. Um, that is on the back cover of our book. We had um, J.A. Tan, Ryan Smolik from Canada, and Seth Twast and um, Trent Allman were honored. And um, they're all artists that have been working on their craft for uh, quite a while. So we were really thrilled that, that those four were the ones that were selected. That's awesome. So if somebody is sitting at home and they're watching this and they're saying, okay, I really, my child has great artistic tendencies and I want to really feed that. If they come to you, what kind of support do you give the artists? If some, are you asking if somebody um, comes to me yes. and they have a child as an artist? Yes. Okay, we have, we have um, in um, around the United States and Canada, we also have an email um, of opportunities, and that, that is how like, the United Nations staff um, came about um, with our artists, and um, just a lot of the okay. the United States we really get into because of we're having a terrible time with the connection. So you know what I'm going to recommend that we do? I think we should take a break because what you're saying is so important and I want our viewers to be able to hear it and I want to be able to hear it. Okay. So I think we should take a break. During the break, we're going to see if we can't clean up the Skype connection and stick with us because we're going to be back more with Deborah Husseini after these, uh, Husseini after these messages. 
Welcome back to Autism Live, and thank you for sticking with us. We have solved our, we think, well, we're knocking on wood here, we've solved our Skype issue. Uh, so we are once again joined by Deborah Hosseini uh, from The Art of Autism. Deborah, thank you for working with us through that. So thrilled to have you here. Thank you. <clears throat> At we can hear you, it's a wonderful thing. So uh, before the break, I was asking you, if somebody is watching at home and they have a child that has an interest in art and wants to do more and they contact you what kinds of things can the art of autism help with that with that child um, well primarily what we do is we have an email list of opportunities and that's not just with the art of autism we work with um, so many different organizations and we send them out notices about exhibits or fundraisers or whatever that they could become part of because mm -hmm. one of the things is getting their name out there yeah. and we can also put them on our website like um, their images of their work and or their poetry we have a section for poetry and we also um, put them out on Facebook book as well and from that um, some of the artists have generated a following and we should mention of course since you brought it up that you guys have a very active Facebook page and so how can people find that on Facebook what, you, what is is it the art of autism it's the art of autism okay and yes. it's a wonderful wonderful resource and what I love about you know I love everything that you guys do but what I really love is that there's the two sided two sides of this coin here that people can go to your site and see the kind of work that people are doing which is really inspirational if somebody wants to take a couple of minutes and you have all these different categories they can look at some of the things it's so varied and it's so inspirational to see how empowered they are to express themselves but at the same time you're also promoting them as individuals and they're working and and keying them into opportunities to show their work and and in some cases to to make money, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Last week, um, we had the West Side Art Walk in Ventura, and we were featured on the front page of the VC Reporter, mm -hmm. and um, we actually had seven uh, people on the spectrum in their own words inside the VC Reporter. So they did a big four-page article on us, and it, I think it um, increased awareness in the community, and some of those artists came out, sold their work, and um, we also had poetry readings and some um, artists were just speaking about at our event um, what it is like to be on the spectrum. So it was an educational component as well. Yeah. Really this. And it's also like an empowering thing for people on the spectrum to get together and they're, they're creative, they share ideas. Like we yeah. had um, Eileen Sabora and Danny Bowman were at this event speaking Japanese together. It was very oh, funny. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, it's really cute. And they were sharing ideas and uh, making contacts. And that's one of the things our organization does. We, um, we try to put people together that um, we think will work together. For example, Danny's working with Justin Kana from New Jersey, and he's come up and he's working on storyboards with her. So we that's something that you don't see um, on our Facebook page or on our website, but it's mm -hmm. happening behind the scenes. It's really amazing. And so we mentioned Carrie, Carrie Bowers, briefly uh, in the other mm -hmm. part of the interview, and she edited the books for you. She's somebody who's very involved with your organization. Your organization, right. And her son is a filmmaker. Um, yes. And, you know, just kind of want to have you talk about the, the full gamut here, because I, I think sometimes when you say art, people think paintings and they don't think beyond that. So talk no, about we, all the different categories that your art takes uh, the, the gamut yes we've had um, a film we've had film festivals mm -hmm. where um, we've shown films like um, Taylor's film normal people scare me mm -hmm. Taylor by the way for the first time entered um, visual art in this last show last week he did oh, some wonderful. really great recycled art which um, got a lot of attention and um, we also do book signings and um, poetry readings, mm -hmm. and we have, Carrie does full-on entertainment shows. She gets dancers, musicians, <laughs> singers, and last year we did an event in Hollywood, and we also did an event in Vancouver where it was a full-on event. So it's whatever size we can customize it to um, the, the venue. Okay, wonderful. So let me ask you, because you're an organization that probably could, in this economy, use some donations. Am I right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, 
let's just talk dream world for a moment because I was, you know, putting some pressure on, on a certain rapper by the name of 50 Cent yeah. to perhaps give a million or so to your organization. What kind of an impact, what could a million dollars do for your organization? Oh, wow. We would be international. We'd go to different um, cities around the world. And, um, you know, we're just looking for... Um, right now, like maybe 10 or 20,000 to get framing done and to, um, you know, rent space if we need to. Mm -hmm. And some of the logistics right now, it's just coming from out of, out of our own pockets. Right. So, um, we do get, we did an Indiegogo campaign and we got a couple thousand dollars last year, which gave all the artists in my book, a free copy of the book. Wonderful. Okay. And, and so we've talked about the dream, you know, like if, if there was a million dollar don donation, but you mentioned that, you know, you're, you've set your sights a little bit lower than that, uh, at the moment, but you would take more, <laughs> wouldn't you? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. We could do it. We could um, do a lot with a million dollars. But talk to us about, you know, you said framing. So the artists are doing the work, but then you you then frame it for them so that they can do, uh, or that's what you'd like to be able to do. Yeah, I've, I've been framing some of the work on myself. Um, if they, some of the works are prints, and we want to show a diverse um, um, art, so we're not mm -hmm. always showing the same artist that are um, because people would get tired. You know, I'm at right. um, a, a local venue here twice a year for a month, and I have to mix it up a lot. So I'll take prints and frame them. And we have some extraordinary artists, and um, it's like really a talking piece. We had like over a thousand people come in last weekend at the Westside Art Walk, and I think they were just blown away with the diversity of the artists. Wonderful. Well, so uh, for anybody who's watching who, if they have a dollar to donate or they have five dollars to donate or ten dollars to donate, you'll take that as well, yes? Yes, and we um, are operating right now with the Celebrate Autism Foundation. Mm -hmm. They're a nonprofit, so they're kind of our umbrella for, um, so for tax write-offs. Okay, so how could somebody then give, can they earmark it to, they can give it to Celebrate Autism but earmark it for Art of Autism? Yes, they can. And how would they go about doing that? Um, there's a website, um, I think it's called unintentionalhumor.com, right. and I think she's coming out with the Celebrate Autism Foundation website. Um, okay. She's just received her nonprofit, but her nonprofit's Linda Anderson, and she and her her son Brent wrote a book called Unintentional Humor, Celebrating the Literal Mind. We've, we've featured that here on the show. We, we right, interviewed her right, and featured it. We love that book. Yes, and so her, her foundation is going to actually is a pathway through for um, organizations like ours that could help um, help us. Yeah, because it makes it possible for you to be able to take donations and have people have it be a tax deduction, correct? Yes, exactly. So, which is a wonderful thing. That's what that 501c3, which can take a whole lot of time. Um, so to be under that umbrella is a really advantageous thing. But, um, but can they go to your Facebook page to donate? I just want to make it as easily as possible if somebody well, wants to give you money. They could go to our website right now. Um, it's not tied in with the Celebrate Autism Foundation, but we could um, make it do that. You know, okay. that's that's something we're working on right now. Okay. But that they could donate right now through our website. And you also take volunteers if people want to help in terms of their time. You're willing to have them help you out, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. We have uh, we have. A volunteer photographer that was at our last event, and um, we need help with websites, social media, um, just getting the word out. We have one volunteer in Los Angeles that got us a great venue for next um, March at Mr. Music Head in Hollywood, so it's going to be all music-related things. Wonderful. And if people, wherever they are in the world, if there's somebody who is in England and they would like to be a part of this, you you said you'd like to be international, so there's a possibility that you could... Oh, well, we already are international. We have artists from about 17 different countries. Okay. In fact, we just um, partnered with this woman yesterday, Gloria Simino, um, who goes to Kenya and, and Nepal and works with autistic um, children in art. And so she has all this art that she wants to show. And we were um, just talking with her yesterday. She'd be a great person to be on your show, too. OK, we'll have to have her on. So wonderful. So and, and no matter because we're an international show here. And so wherever somebody's watching, if they want to be involved, they can be. You can find yes. some way for them to be hooked yes. in and be involved. Wonderful, right. wonderful, wonderful. Um, and uh, and, it, and you're open to whatever creative form, whether it's 
doing a monologue, a film, paint, sculpture, poetry. Uh, comic you guys, books. comic books. Yes. Uh, short videos. You guys anime. do it all. Anime. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, and you're helping artists to be hooked up to information so that they can get their name out there. That's right. The, our, our tagline is the art of autism, finding places and spaces for artists to be seen and heard. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I want to go back to the book for a second, because I think the book is a wonderful way for people to get involved, too. Uh -huh. um, and I encourage you, don't just buy one. You're going to want to buy two. Buy one for yourself and buy one to give away, whether it's that, you know, for those people that are hard to buy a gift for, whether it's for a birthday or for a holiday or a commemorative thing. It is a beautiful coffee table book, again, worthy of being on anybody's coffee table, and a great gift, and you can, uh, you know, send a card with it saying, and you're, you know, by owning this book, you're helping to promote artists, but trust me, you're going to want to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for a coffee table book, it's very inexpensive, but again, they can buy it on Amazon.com, and, and that's totally fine, but you don't get as much of the proceeds to be able to put back into the organization organization if they buy it on Amazon. So what is your preference of how they buy it? Um, on our website and it's www.artautism.com. Art autism.com right uh, go there buy two books and uh, and take a look at some of the work that's there you guys it's absolutely breathtaking now you mentioned that your son is an artist yes and what is his particular area of art that he likes to participate in he um, does oil and acrylic um, paintings Wonderful. And were you also an artist? And, and so that's how you came to know that he was an artist or did it take you by surprise? Um, it took us by um, surprise because he used to always just scribble in black and he still kind of does. He says he can't draw. He likes to paint. Uh -huh. And we had a therapist that um, through UCSB Kegel Autism Center that graduated from RISD. His name's Colin Simbleman. He has his PhD now. Uh -huh. And he... Um, he works with Star Autism in Ventura, and he um, introduced Kevin to painting just kind of as a therapeutic tool, and it just kind of took off, and that's all they used to do is paint. And so every session would be painting, and he would um, help Kevin with his communication through oh, painting. Wonderful. And and I'm sure that you've seen the gamut of, you know, people, every possible place on the spectrum that will use art to express themselves, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, and it's like um, you have from nonverbal deaf people to like, you know, Asperger's. It's all over on the gamut of autism. Art is a way that they can communicate. So for parents, you know, because one of the things that's the hardest thing for me is that from time to time I meet parents who say, you know, uh, I'll talk about the fact that my child has autism, autism and they'll say, you know, how's your child doing? And I say, my child's doing really well. And there's that moment and they say, yeah, well, our, our child uh, very profoundly affected and our child yes. has no skills. And, and, and it's always this disheartening thing because my, my heart just beats out my, outside my chest for them because I feel like they've reached a moment when they've given up and they think yes. that this is all that they can reach. And we talk all the time about ABA, but art is another wonderful way way of, of getting in there, of, of reaching in to reach a child, what would you say to those parents that well, feel like their child has oh, no skills? You know, the brain is plastic. It continues to grow throughout our lifetime. And um, one of our artists in our book, Seth Twast, he was evaluated for a dry mopping career. He's not very verbal, but at age 20, he took his first art class, and now he's in museums around the world. He is um, like 29. He was one of the artists picked for a United Nations Autism Awareness Stamp, and he's a very prolific artist. And there's another artist, um, Ricky Nesbitt, who, who's deaf and nonverbal, and is in a group home. He started um, doing his art at age 32. And that now he does, he started um, with little art as big as teacups. 
and it, they kept on growing and growing and growing. So he did these big, huge canvases. And then he used the canvases as a backdrop for his photography, where he photographs his little um, plastic animals against this huge backdrop. So he's created his own world. And his sister has said that it's just been the most amazing insight into his mind, that she never knew she could connect with him until he started doing this art. So I, I would say don't give up. There's yeah. always some creativity in every Everybody. Yeah, and what a great outlet and a, and a source of something positive for everybody to focus on. Yes. And that's just aside from the fact that, as you said, an insight into, I think the number one thing that most parents say is, I wish I could get inside my kid's head. I wish I could know what they were thinking and how they felt and what was important to them. I think that's true for all of us, whether our kids are on the spectrum or not. And to have that insight, to be able to look at a canvas and see, at least in part, how they see the world is power. Oh, it's so powerful. Um, we have a video on, I just put on our website yesterday. It's by Ali Lutkin, and she's from England. And she videotaped what it was like. It's a very creative video that uses her art. Um, being autistic, she I think she has Asperger's, mm -hmm. actually. But um, it's an amazing video if you watch it, because it's like how she sees the world. Mm -hmm. She, It's it's great. That's uh, so I, wonderful. I just can't speak you know, more about how they're trying to communicate how they see the world differently. And just because they're different doesn't mean it's, you know, not as good or yeah. lesser than. Yeah, and, I, I, you know, we're always talking about leveling things and, and accepting differences. But when you look at your book, it really is amazing because you don't look at it for very long. I mean, you know, you see Art of Autism and you open it up and you know you're looking at art from people who are somewhere on the spectrum, but that quickly fades away mm -hmm. and you find yourself drawn into the art. And and I, at least one time, I you know, I remember going, I, I, I reminding myself, okay, these are individuals on the spectrum. Like it just, that part of it slips away because you appreciate what you're seeing, which is just so powerful, powerful. How did you choose what went in the book? Well, I, I it, it was kind of really organic. I had a lot of new artists. I did another book called Artism, the Art of Autism, which was 54 artists. Mm -hmm. And um, there was something that happened with that book. So I did another book and I had so many new artists that had just come to me and a lot of it is their moms or dads or uncles or whatever coming um, to me and talking and I found that there was like a unifying theme among a lot of the parents and they were, um, they had a certain sense of the autism being more than a disability but like being a gift yeah. and that came through in the stories and how these um, these people were promoting their children and helping to get, they're trying to change like the world and how we see our children. Yeah. So that we're not seeing, oh, that poor person, you know, he can't do this. Well, he can do all of this. Yeah. Yeah. So really that's wonderful. how kind of it came. And a lot of it, it's not so much sometimes was the art, it was the stories that went along with the art. I felt the stories were very compelling. Wonderful. And of course, that's why you've got the subtitle, Shifting Perspectives. Yes. Uh, really, really powerful. So uh, tell us again, because it was in the part of the interview where we weren't necessarily hearing everything. If somebody wants to come to an event that's done by the Art of Autism, what, what have you guys got coming up? Well, um, we are going to be at a little local bookstore that has two events a year for us. It's the um, Curious Cup. That's in October. Mm -hmm. We're going to be at Mr. Music Head in March of next year. We'll be in the Berkshires, I think, in April. And um, from the event last week, um, Green Art People in Ventura want to do a, an exhibit with us. And we get, um, we're getting a lot of referrals that people are interested. And um, I think last week was really one of our best shows because we showed 115 pieces of art from 25 different artists. So it was our wow. biggest show. And um, people were just blown away with the art and the creativity. And you know what's really striking to me is that here you were, you were a mom, and you saw this in your child, and now you've created this 
whole thing for so many other people. Uh, and it's just very inspirational to me to see over and over and over again what one mom can do. You oh, are absolutely. a hero. That's just oh, amazing. You. <laughs> uh, and, How are you? Well, you know, I'm just doing my little thing. Yeah, <laughs> trying to, trying to keep up. And it's a fun thing to do, too. Because it is. It is so fun to see the art and the poetry and the stories and hear. The, it's, it's very creative. It's Everybody should have my job because, you know, you never know what you're going to get in your email box the next day. I can just imagine. We have uh, a wall here that we are converting into a collage that we've asked for work of works of art from the individuals that watch our show the, oh, some of the some of the kids great. and so and we've got we've got the beginnings but if you have anybody who would like to add to our collage we would be thrilled uh to to add whatever somebody would like if you would put the word out for us oh yes i will can you send me like who they would contact and yes. you have an image of your wall what it looks like now yes i can send you both of those things so that you yes. can send and i'll uh, put that out Okay, awesome, uh, because that would be thrilling. Again, we want to remind people uh, that if you go to art, it's art autism, mm -hmm. um, or I'm on the site right now, The Art of Autism with all hyphens, and there's clearly a button there that says click here to donate. Mm -hmm. um, you can donate, and I, I would imagine that no amount is too small, that any amount would be lovely. But if you're Mr. 50 Cent and watching a nice million <laughs> dollar. $1 million. A <laughs> million dollars would go a long way. He's an artist. You guys are artists and you're promoting artists. I just see how that goes together so well. Yes. Uh, so we'll keep saying it uh, and maybe it'll happen and let us know if it does. Thank uh, you, Shannon. But I also want to remind people to participate and buy the books uh, or buy the book because and buy two of them um, because it's it's absolutely lovely and it's inspirational. You know how some days you just need that you know, it's a rough day at home and you just need a little bit of inspiration. You thumb through this book and and you breathe easier. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I congratulate both you and Carrie on doing a great job. Thank you. And we'll have to have you back. Anytime you got a big event, let us know and we'd be happy and thrilled to have you on the show. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you Shannon. so much. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye bye.